Good morning, everybody. Nancy did me the honor of uh, having the pleasure of opening this conference. And it's really with great pleasure that I welcome all of you here in John Jay College in New York for this SIPNAS TLA conference, an event we were all, I really mean all, looking forward to. And it's great to see that it has become a reality today. Uh, we are all enormously pleased with your fantastic attendance for these three days uh, coming. And it's, I think we can say that it reflects also this incredible amount of energy that the or organizational committee of TLA and SIPMAS has put into the preparation of this conference. Standing in front of this auditorium, uh, I recognize a lot of familiar faces which have been at SIPMAS conferences before. And I'm sure that after this experience we'll have together this week, a lot of you will do us the pleasure of to become a familiar face at SIPMAS conferences in the future as well. Je suis tout à fait heureux aussi d'accueillir aussi nos amis francophones du Canada, l'Espagne, de la France, du Mexique. Et le bilinguisme de la CIPMAS a toujours été dans les statuts. Et je suis fier de voir qu'on aura des présentations en français, non seulement le matin dans les séances plénières, mais aussi euh, lors des séances de travail et des communications d'exposition. Je suis reconnaissant à la TLA qui a embrassé l'idée vraiment d'offrir la traduction simultanée et aussi de faire un programme dans les deux langues. We started the idea of having a conference with TLA and the USA as early as 2005. Kenneth has to correct me or Nancy afterwards. It is not correct to say even 2004 or 2005. I'm not sure as well. And the location has shifted. It was first New York, then we were going to San Francisco, then we were going to Austin. And now we are again in the big apple here today. And our thanks go to the whole planning of this conference. Uh, I would like to especially thank Kenneth Schlesinger, which is the former president of TLA, whose attendance in Munich and London created the foundation of this conference. And more as anyone else, I want to thank us, uh, Nancy Friedland, who is not only the current president of TLA, but combined this task with being also co-chair of this conference and has brought our ideas to live life. Um, well, Nancy, I don't know how you did it, but thank you very much in a way. Um, for SIPMAS, I would like to thank especially Alan Jones, which is uh, also the co-chair of this conference, and uh, Sylvie Francois for their work and support in making this event happen. It's not only these people, but also the whole planning team of this conference, which made this possible that we can sit here together today and have this impressive, I really find it impressive, program in front of us, which such a great variety of papers, working sessions, panel discussions, and exhibition papers. I think I can speak for all of you that we had a wonderful start already yesterday with the fantastic excursions. Uh, and I hope that beside the fact that these unique occasions of visiting other theaters and other collections. Uh, it gave you also possibility to meet already the other de delegates of this conference. And there will be also a lot of further opportunities of networking, not only at lunchtime, but also at the receptions with, we have organized for the different days of this conference. As a SIPMAS president, I want to emphasize that we are very, very much looking forward to the reception at the French, French consulate tomorrow and have the opportunity to celebrate over there the 60th anniversary of, of SIPMAS. Well, I'm just convinced we all have three more fantastic days in front of us and certainly also stimulating contributions and fruitful discussions. So I wish you all a fantastic conference. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to uh, SIDMIS TLA conference 2014 in New York City. I'm going to echo um, a number of, uh, of uh, statements that Jan has made. I think it's worth repeating. Um, but uh, first, I'll introduce myself. My name is Nancy Friedland, and I am the Librarian for Film Studies and Performing Arts at Columbia University. I am president of Theater Library Association and had the pleasure of being a co-chair, along with Alan Jones, of this extraordinary conference. 
Um, Facebook was established in 2004. Um, Twitter followed two years later. Um, these two social media giants um, presented new models for how we communicate and share information. They were building um, new communities in vastly different ways. And it was around this time that TLA and SIDMOS began the conversation of joining together, sponsoring a joint conference in the United States. With fits and starts, um, it has taken us now across the country, as Jan mentioned, and back. And so we're really delighted that we're actually here. Um, some of us are still like pinching ourselves, um, but uh, very, very excited to have you all here in New York. Um, New York City is an alpha global city, um, and an alpha global city is defined as a city that serves as an important node in the global economic universe. Uh, the performing arts in New York City are a vital part of this economy. Um, the performing arts then become an essential part of the global economic universe. There really wasn't a better place uh, to have this, this gathering. Um, there are many, many nations represented here. You have all traveled far. Um, uh, the advantage of being a local organizer is um, basically I had to get on the number two train from Harlem. Um, so a little bit of an easier commute for me. Um, our researchers, scholars, um, are now confronted with, with the digital age. And so many of the papers um, that we'll be hearing and discussing in the next three days really talk about the impact of the digital. Um, so we are basically the born digital is upon us. Um, we're facing issues of migration to new formats is, has become a way of life. Um, it's almost impossible to believe that 35 millimeter film was the industry standard for more than 100 years. And we look at file format changes now are happening in almost like milliseconds, which is creating extraordinary challenges for our archives as we're still digitizing our analog collections. Um, we're all here because we love the performing arts, and we love our mission of preserving and providing access to this historical record. I believe the performing arts um, are the jewels of the humanities disciplines. Um, it's creative expression of our thoughts, our feelings, our lives. Um, we tell our stories with dramatic representation. It's also a collaborative art. Um, so we are looking at the performing arts of having creative input of many, many people, including directors and designers, um, whether it be costumes, scenic, lighting, uh, producers, actors, um, choreographers. So um, in the next three days, uh, we will be looking at how we can pr preserve basically this cultural heritage. So I'd like to also take a minute um, to say that uh, coming back to Facebook and Twitter and Flickr and all this social media that started 10 years ago when our discussions were starting, looking at ways to share information. I think it's so dynamic that we're all here. We have a fabulous network right here in this room that I hope will we'll continue on even beyond this conference. Um, at the same time, we will be on Facebook and we will be on Twitter and we will be on uh, Flickr posting um, uh, uh, statements and information about the conference. So please join us in both. In, in both virt in the virtual environment as well. So I'd also like to take a minute to thank the extraordinary ensemble that helped to make this event possible. Um, with tremendous gratitude, I thank John Jay and CUNY um, for helping us secure this fabulous venue. I also thank the New York Public Library for the Performing Arts for their continued support. Our volunteers, Walter Schleck, for his work co coordinating the excursions, which I hope many of you got to, to take advantage of yesterday. Um, I uh, also thank uh, Rachel Smiley for her wonderful work on our program layout, and um, Emily Witkowski, who helped to manage the ongoing registration throughout this whole process. I'd like to thank Lori Murphy and Tiffany Nixon for their help with local arrangements, David Nockhamson for his help on the website, and to the organization committee, um, to uh, Sylvie, uh, to Jan, to Kenneth, and to Alan. Um, it's uh, been somewhat of a, a joyful ride, um, many, many hours on the phone. We've, we were using very old-fashioned technology of phone conferencing and email. Um, so we had our regular dates set up every two weeks, Kenneth and I in the morning, and Jan and Alan in the afternoon, and Sylvie, of course, on, with us on New York time. Um, so uh, we are thrilled that, that we made it to this day. Now, it is my heartfelt pleasure to introduce you to our very special conference keynote, William Ivy Long. He has been described as one of the hardest working costume designers in the business. It's not unusual for him to have seven shows running simultaneously. More importantly, he is widely recognized as one of the best costume designers working today. The art of costume design, 
It means fluency in, in, in fabrics. It's understanding construction, um, understanding colors. It's sketching, it's history, it's storytelling. It's knowing the play, it's knowing what your director wants, and it's knowing what your actors need. William Ivy Long is the consummate costume designer. His designs have been described as elegant and theatrical, stylish and versatile, and I will add simply stunning. He takes care to understand the characters, the play, the arcs, the transitions, and at the same time dresses his actors in style and comfort, well aware of their physical demand the role requires. His costumes can also help to drive the physical action, as with the case with Cinderella. He was recently nominated for his 14th Tony Award for his designs for Bullets Over Broadway, which is currently running on Broadway, alongside his other productions, including Rodgers and Hammerstein's Cinderella, for which he won the Tony, and the long-running hit Chicago. In addition to Cinderella, he was awarded the Tony for his work on the fabulous hit The Producers. The costumes were described as show-stealing with masterful construction. He won the Tony for Hairspray, which is based on the movie by John Waters. John Waters was so pleased with the costumes. Um, for Hairspray, he said, I think William's clothes are amazing. You have to have great taste to do bad taste. He, he tastefully brought a touch of Versailles to 1950s Baltimore. He also won Tonys for Crazy For You, for Nine, and the incredible production of Grey Gardens. He has won numerous other awards and nominations. In addition to all of this, he currently serves as the chairman of the board for the American Theatre Wing. Please welcome our esteemed guest, William Ivy Long. Thank you. Realize we don't have, I've got to be strict. I'm a Virgo. How many Virgos in this room? I bet a lot, because that's what we do. <laughs> we make lists. <laughs> Check them twice. Um, thank you. This is quite an honor. I've been reading about what you, what you do. Of course, I knew what you do, but I didn't know it was you. So uh, now I see faces. Um, I have three parts of my very brief talk, because it's, what, 20 minutes, something like that. Um, the first is I'm going to introduce uh, one of my favorite projects that I work on every year. I'm in my 43rd season working on this one uh, piece of theater, living theater. And then I'm going to show you my archives uh, in the Berkshires. And then I'm going to show you my latest uh, exhibit, museum exhibit, at the Cameron uh, Art Museum in Wilmington, North Carolina. So. Uh, and all of them are on, on my website except for the archives. I don't tell anybody about that. <laughs> Didn't know anyone was that interested. I guess I've not been <laughs> preaching to the right choir. <laughs> so um, that's why it's not on the website. Also, I don't want people breaking in and mucking about. Um, so here we go. <clears throat> Let's start with, oh, that's my name. North, Southern. We're going to do a 30-second reel. OK. Oh, we'll do a little quickie thing. This shows you several of my shows. Well, that's very quick. <laughs> well, that's a few of them. Um, so what I'm going to show you first is I began, I'm a, uh, I come from a farm family. We grow cotton and peanuts. And my father was the first of us to leave the farm and, as I say, go and join the circus. He was a playwright, young playwright, and had, uh, received a playwriting scholarship to the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. And almost the rest is history, but I will share a bit of it. So 1937, which is also the founding of your day, uh, the people of North, this particular, can you hear me? Is this okay? Uh, the people of this part of North Carolina wanted to tell a story about their founding, which was the Sir Walter Raleigh's first colony in, in uh, North America. And uh, my father is standing next to the photographer. He was a graduate teaching assistant in 1936 when this picture was taken. So all these are the potentates. Paul Green on the extreme, your left, um, is the playwright. And it is presented nightly, see 1937, uh, Every, every summer, and uh, it's an outdoor theatrical experience, lots of mosquitoes. And here's the opening night, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. 
our president. Of course, some of you are not American, so I'll just tell you he's one of our, he's on the dime, so we love him that much. <laughs> Uh, and we've not replaced, actually we have replaced his dime, but he's still on most of our dimes. So we really love him. And this is a little thing that says he stood here. And this is Hirschfeld came the next year and did this sketch of the uh, Los Conos, which was given to my father and then I gave it to our local archives, the National Park Service archives of the uh, Waterside Theater, National Park Service. And here I am. So I grew up down there. My parents met down there. They got married and then they had me. And here I am on my first birthday. Just to give you a little basis, okay, keep going through. I'm with the costume designer, Irene Rains, from Chapel Hill. There I am playing. We didn't play cowboys and Indians. We played colonists and in Indians. <laughs> there we are. I'm on the right. On the left. Your left, yeah. Okay, keep going. Then National Geographic visited. I'm in the black T-shirt, just proving that insanity runs in the family. Keep going. There we go. And that was hair. Look at that. This is Betty Smith who wrote A Tree Girls in Brooklyn, which is probably the reason that I'm here today, because I was in art history. I have a degree in history from uh, William & Mary. And then I studied uh, Renaissance Baroque architecture at Chapel Hill, and I was, in the, I was a teaching fellow, Crest teaching fellow, and I was going to do that for the rest of my life. But because Betty Smith had taught my parents playwriting, she said, oh, let Billy come and stay with me. Well, Billy went and stayed with her. And who knew? Well, we all knew. She had gone to the Yale School of Drama. So the brainwashing began. <laughs> so from uh, art history to uh, the Yale School of Drama. So here she is at Chapel Hill. This is the very first year. So this is 1937. I want you to see the type of historical um, accuracy going on. OK, next. This is my mother playing Queen Elizabeth. Look at, look at the upholstery trim around the collar. Keep going. <clears throat> this is my first, when I first came back in 1983. 7, 89, 89, I think, my first Queen Elizabeth costume. Keep going. Here we are with Lynn Redgrave playing Queen Elizabeth. Um, yes, Lynn Redgrave. Uh, keep going, keep going. We're very lucky because in the British Museum, John White, who was the original governor, he was also the cartographer of the whole uh, Sir Walter Raleigh exploration team. And he, um, actually his maps are quite accurate even today, but he also, so he began as a cartographer, but he also drew all the Native Americans that he, but he, he and so this is one of the ones that is least um, uh, noble, savage looking, because they're actually dancing. He was actually commissioned to create the very first investment brochure in 1584 so that people would invest in the colony. And the idea was to draw the, the native population as Roman statues. So everyone would look uh, harmless and noble. And you will therefore, your money is safe investing into this proposition. So the British Museum has a remarkable number, hundred, actually a hundred of his sketches still uh, exist. I've seen them physically, I've seen them twice. Keep going. But nonetheless, in 1937, they were not interpreting John White's drawings. They, this is the Indian they, they created. Look at the paint, look at the uh, designs you see based on cowboys and Indians. This is through, this is in 1937, a colorized version. This is in the 1950s. Continue, look, look at the little Pac-Man, go back. The Pac-Man sort of thing on the chest. I mean, of course, this is, th these were the first costumes I ever saw because I was a child, you saw pictures of. So I was in awe of all the red paint because they were red Indians, so let's paint them red. Fascinating. And then uh, in the 60s, uh, Broadway Joe Layton, who designed, it was a great uh, director on Broadway, brought in a whole new Broadway experience. And this is Fred Vopel, who was uh, head of design, uh, costume design at NYU for years and years and years. And of course, you notice the mid-century modern Poochie prints. But so no one quite got a, it, it was interpreting history loose and fast, if you know what I'm saying. And these are some of Fred Vopel's Pac-Man designs, continuing this strange thing. Here they are, keep going. And now we're start. so I, when I took, took over, came back, I thought, well, let's actually look at these, these drawings. So these are my feeble first attempts. I've gotten a little better then, but these are back in 1990, I think. So keep going, looking at the different ones. Now, the Debris, Theodore Debris from um, the Flemish uh, engraver is the ones who actually, these are the drawings, of course, and then go back to Debris, you'll see, and that's, they were sort of made even more noble in the engravings. OK, this is our interpretation. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Next, next. See, trying to draw 
some, see, see the tattoos are the, the painted, trying to create those. Next. There's Jesse Helms. We always used to blame the lack of toplessness on Jesse Helms, but I must say it's gotten even more conservative since Jesse Helms has died. So I don't think we're going to get any topless maidens anytime soon. So here we are. Notice, yes. There you go. Notice now there, you see the draw, see how it's draped that way and then go back to debris. See it's a lower drape. Fascinating, different tastes. 15, and that these were done in 1592. So from 1584, so it was like 12, took 12 years to create the whole document. Okay, keep going. Okay, keep going. Ah, so right before, about 1907, uh, 07, the, uh, Chairman, what's her name? Chairman of the Department of Cultural Resources. North Carolina is so conservative, they can't say cultural affairs because it's, it's solicitous, sol sol sounds sexy. So <laughs> we're not allowed to call it cultural affairs. So it's cultural resources. I'm not making any of this up. <laughs> uh, you can go out, probably find it right out. So she, Betsy Buford, um, asked me to, to create, do a paper, present a paper to the Museum of History on um, design, uh, interpreting history from 1937 to 2007. And with that aim in mind, I went upstairs at the costume shop, I was already designing there, and I scooped up, oh, some from 1937, some from 38, 40, and I scooped up a lot of costumes and uh, brought them back to uh, New York where I was gonna catalog them and everything. And two, two months later, this happened. The whole building burned down, burned to a crisp. Keep going. Luckily, and there's one of the firemen looking very much like an Elizabethan soldier. <laughs> and that shows you the scarred area. The whole theater would have burned down. Keep going, burn. But luckily, so then I started redesigning again. I'm gonna go very, keep going, Brian, very quickly. That's me. Research, because I wanna get going. Fittings, finished products, research. A lot of, with the classes, I'm just showing. Oh, you all know all this, I'm, I'm, I'm just keep going going this is a the a, we have this uh this is a, this is the main picture of Sir Walter Raleigh that we've been interpreting for the beard and so slashing and dagging and and pearls and here's another interpretation with his son Watt okay uh then me with the soldiers there we are different soldiers you see one side is for one scene one side is for the other I don't really mean they're two different lengths of pant Fittings, that and there we are. Okay, keep going. Yes, keep going. Queen Elizabeth with her, with her counselors. So we're trying to be as accurate as we can be historically. Keep going. Leading man. White shirt means leading man. If you ever need a little hint, <laughs> look for the man in the white shirt. That's the leading man. Okay, keep going. That's our Elizabethan gardens. Just keep keep going through this. Oh, and then, the, then I devised uh, class systems. There was, of course, the nobles who did not come to the, this country, but we did have our uh, people with coats of arms come, and all the way down to peasants who, you know, they didn't know they were peasants, they just, and they had no idea of fashion, so of course they wore clothes. So uh, keep them going. It's hard to tell kids this in school, that everything isn't fashion. Sometimes it's clothing that you just inherit from your mother or your aunt or whoever just died. Okay. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. So this is a lot of, so I tried the same thing with the men. Okay, here we go, here we go. And then we, then for the, just because we could, we started taking pictures, you know, like this to show that, look, we're making it come alive. Keep going, Brian, I wanna get to the next one. Keep going. So I keep all these, and in a minute, you're gonna see where I keep them. So, while you're looking at all this, I will tell you, ah, here we go. So I started collecting my own costumes years ago. Um, after my first big Broadway show uh, crashed and burned on tour, <laughs> and they dispersed everything, they started giving the clothes to people who wanted it in the cast, and the rest ended up being given to lo a local college where the, it crashed and burned. And, and I have been gradually, in fact, p friends of mine, uh, look around and they, every now and then a, a costume from one of my closed shows will arrive in the mail. Someone has found it and bought it and, or stolen it or, and send it right to me. So I just thought, well, I should start saving these things. And I wasn't sure that I was gonna have a, an exciting career. And, uh, but something told me, oh, better keep, let's, 
I saved my, and I have never given away my sketches, and I've never sold them. Only one college friend who has a wonderful, Douglas Colby, you should probably meet him. Maybe he should be on one of your panels. He has an exquisite collection of stage design. Uh, rivals the Tobin collection, actually. It's ex extraordinary. His grandparents owned the Algonquin. And so th that whole literary DNA has gone through him and gone out into art collection. So uh, he's the only one who has any of my sketches. But they, we have something on Broadway that called the Broadway Flea Market. And this is why this is a major cancerous um, problem here in, 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 on the Broadway. And I say cancer is because brought flea markets imply you buy useless things that have been thrown out for nothing. And uh, routinely, every year, costume designers and set designers give original sketches to be sold at the flea markets. I've been horrified by this for years and years and years, and no one, and I've tried to stop them, but it's for this cause, for Broadway Cares, the Equity Fights AIDS, an extraordinarily important cause. But I say give them the $20. Don't give them your sketches. So it's been very... Even the attitude towards what it is we do, the, the sketchings, the drawing, the fabrics, the Bibles, the, the costumes themselves, they're not uh, appreciated in New York. Uh, so here we go. I bought the local school in my little town in the Berkshires, 1908. As you see, it's a very strong looking. I've replaced the, uh, the roof and I've, the air is all moving around and, and it's a beautiful building. It's huge. And I bought it for my archives. And here we go. I have uh, hundreds of these uh, flat files, familiar to you more than to me. I'm still learning how to, how to use them. And uh, there you go, for instance, uh, the acid-free paper. And these are Siegfried and Roy sketches. So they're, I don't have them in order. I should have them in some sort of order. But at least they're in these, these files. Okay. Then I save all of my Bibles. You probably know what Bibles are. They're the documentation of, of each of the costumes for each of the show. And in fact, stop for a second. You can see like, you know, the labels that are similar. That's a whole show, like 12 of them. Sometimes when I did the producer, I have a, producers, I have so many tours, I have an entire one of these segments is just producer's Bibles. So I save all those. Do you have pictures of the bins of the fabrics too? We save the fabric swatches. I'm actually still, some days I wonder, why am I saving it all? But of course I do. And uh, this is also historical stock. So I don't have everything in perfect, well, and they're imperfect, totally imperfect. But then I use also the building. I have several uh, big rooms. I think these are the kindergarten classes. They're on the first floor with the very small water fountains <laughs> that come to your knee. It's adorable. I've left all the water fountains. So if you get thirsty, you have to bend over and have a nice sip. But I've uh, been very respectful of the building, because architecturally, I think it's extraordinary. So I use my usable stock um, for my Broadway shows still. OK, keep going. This is just one of the shows. Now, these are, are, they, are these the usable things? The, these are the usable things. The usable things. OK, bins and bins. I, whoever invented this particular form of plastic, I just love them. <laughs> because you can see through it, and they stack without falling over and killing you. <laughs> so far. So anyway, this, I have several rooms filled with this sort of thing. Keep going, keep going. That's my office. Lots of framed pictures. Probably badly framed. In fact, you probably shouldn't frame any of the sketches, right? They should all be in the dark. I have uh, committed many sins <laughs> before I knew, and I, only a few sins since. OK, keep going. OK, now, because I'm trying to get this. Here we go. So then uh, several years ago, when was it, 07, something like that? State of North Carolina, I must say, I cannot complain about my, my reception and treatment and support by my local state of North Carolina. It's, uh, it's, it's extraordinary how they have been supportive. Uh, I can't win any more awards from North Carolina unless I'm in the Army. So, uh, and that's not going to happen. So um, they just really are great. And so this exhibit in, in, in Wilmington, North Carolina, it, oh, OK, just keep going. So I, I divided different rooms. This is my very first. We're just going to sort of go through. Also, when I um, uh, write the, what, help me hear the words underneath. Captions, Captions thank you. Um, I try to also say who made the costume. So I do, what's it made out of? Like when you do a sketch, it's what is it, ink? It's this on paper. And with the costumes, I try to say what they are. OK, there we go. That's, uh, and then a doll room. Oh, yes, I had my breakdown years 
I don't know if any of you have ever had breakdown years when nothing works and you're going to give it up and jump off the roof. So instead of that, I made dolls and made costumes and they, for them to wear. It was very helpful, the dialogue between uh, the dolls and myself. So I respect them and honor them, and whenever I can, I trot them out and say thank you to the dolls. <laughs> Obviously, these are knowing giggles. You also have similar ways of staying alive, right? I know. Drink, fortunately, is not as compelling as making dolls for me. Um, the first part of, of, of Contact, one of my musicals, is the, the Watto's The Swing. So this is just showing you at the exhibit how we tried to give the feeling of what it was. These are Ruthstein um, mannequins, which are my particular favorite ones. And I, I designed the, the installation too, and I don't know what they thought. This is the little model that I made. It's a little quarter size, and I actually made the dress on it, and I included it. Dopey things like that. Okay, keep going. Yellow. Yellow on yellow. Ah, and then here we go. These are all on, Brian, you've got these on the, uh, Brian Meir, my associate, and many of you who came to the, uh, my studio the other day. Was it just yesterday? Two days ago? Two days ago. Uh, he's, uh, well, you know how extraordinary he is. He also is computer savvy. I don't even have a cell phone. <laughs> can barely type. But anyway, so here's the, I did frame a bunch of these. How many? 90 something? And uh, anyway, there they are. You can see them online. All different, different styles and things. And underneath it says all the little captions. Oh, and then different crazy rooms. This is from the producer's movie, the movie of the producer's. These, these pearls would never survive eight shows a week on Broadway, I can guarantee you. Okay, keep going. Crazy View Room, Art Deco, like that. And I, do, and, and I own all of these. Uh, everything you've seen so far, I own. Isn't that crazy? I've either convinced the producers now to give them to me because aren't I such a good boy? Or, like with the movie of the producers, which is why they gave them to me, those are only a fraction, they kept the rest. Um, I provided a lot of, uh, for free, items to be used in the film, and so just to be nice, it wasn't written down, they just gave me things. So there are many ways of bartering to get things. Frogs. I, I uh, blackmailed the producers at Lincoln Center to, no, I just told them that I would be showing them in exhibit after exhibit, and I've been doing that. These have been in several exhibits. So when I say blackmail, I, tr I sort of mean I've just tried to encourage them there we go, there's my black. Okay, then the black, then I started doing crazy things like this. All black costumes, and uh, you'll see them by, by set. So this is just ladies costume, cabaret, Sally Bowles, and then all sorts, uh, there's the queen, there's the Len Redgrave. In fact, lucky because it was, uh, the exhibit happened exactly when the fire happened. So uh, I wish I'd had more <laughs> clothes in the exhibit. Okay, these are different uh, Roxy dresses from Chicago. It's been running for 18 years. And I used the same fabric. I have it made at this mill in Lille. And I've been there and worked with the, the because you know, they have the same 19th century uh, machines still make the, the lace in the same place. And uh, so I, I have bolts and bolts made. Every few years we make another 500,000 yards. And then um, these are all the same character, but different styles on the different bodies. Next. This is just deconstructing male uh, garments, okay? I don't know how, what, how I unified this one. <laughs> Black dresses. Sally Bowles on the left. Oh, and crazy uh, from the producers, the Chrysler Building, and then Len Redgrave's dress is Queen Elizabeth. Okay, the red. This is my favorite room, and it didn't photograph well because it's hard to photograph red for some reason. Red on red on red on red. So I just decided. I love red so much, and you can only use one red dress per show, by the way. Anyone who uses otherwise is ignoring the value of red <laughs> or bypassing it. Because really, in life, each person, there's some people who can wear the red dress and some people who can't. And in every show, you should sort of wait for the red dress. So I had actually made many red dresses. Now, I did borrow a lot of these. Some are from the San Francisco Opera, some from other places. Harvey Firestein on the left, that was, he was given that after Hairspray, so I borrowed it from him. And uh, this is another one I made for the Macy's Day Parade. He played, that Macy's Day, this is how advanced New York is, you know, how many, 10 years ago, they invited Harvey to uh, be the fi finale of the Macy's Day Parade as Mrs. Santa. <laughs> Isn't that good? Very knowing. <laughs> we love Macy's. So there, more and more and more, red, red, red. 
And it was exhausting. I don't know if I'll do it again, because you, you would sort of, you'd go into this room, drawn to this red room, and you start looking at all the things. But by the time you, and I started deep red on one side and went to pink. You probably saw that. I ombre it, mixed it all up like that. You were exhausted. People sort of crawled out of the room. So I'm not sure that red is such a good idea for a room, but I was compelled to do it. OK, there you go. Red, 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 lots of red. Actually, online, you can see each one, and they'll tell you actually who made it. This is from the original nine. Oh, Nathan Lane in The Frogs, Nathan Lane in the movie of the producers. I can't, Nathan Lane can wear red, OK? <laughs> one of the people. OK, here we go. I think we're done with the red room. Yes. Now, we're going to just b run through this. I also design crazy things like Mick Jagger's costumes for the Steel Wheels tour, which was filmed, and you can see that somewhere, and Siegfried and Roy at the Mirage. And this is the one that ran for 11 years, would still be running, except for you're probably familiar with the fact that Tiger attacked Roy, or as Roy said, he hit him one too many times, and he just responded. So um, this is it. Well, we go, just go through quickly. I won't comment on them. Well, we have the no, that's okay. No, we don't have any time. So uh, just Puppet Army. You can go on. Brian, yeah, keep going. Brian has done this amazing app, which you can go on my website, which is it's sort of like. It's a website. Huh? It's not an app, actually. It's, it's your website. Okay, see, I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you can look, you can press things, and there is this rectangle of options, and you can look at a poster of a show and press it, right? And then you have all these, this menu, right? Yeah. Dessert menu. <laughs> and you can press one of them, and it's me, blah, 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 talking about it. And the other one shows sketches, finished products, and then you press another one, and it shows them dancing. Because I've always thought, though, no museum really should show dance clothes unless you also see them in motion. Because they were not created as a column. They're created for the kinetic movement. And uh, oh, so see, crazy, isn't this crazy? So there's this, you can press, you can go online if you should so wish and press the Siegfried and Roy and see all this stuff in motion. This is the evil queen, you know, always, in all of these things in Las Vegas, there's always the good people and the bad people and about, uh, ultimately if you wanna get people to go out and, you know, gamble and drink, good, better, triumph over evil. So you've got 90 minutes to tell that story. They're all the same and uh, so we had some really exciting evil people. It was great. These are all the trolls. They're evil, evil trolls. And then I did something for myself. And I just thought, I made, I called it Grandma's Attic, which the museum did not care for, <laughs> that I called it Grandma's Attic. But I just thought, there's a lot of stuff that we work with, buttons and, and shoes and lasts before the sh on which the shoes are made, and just fabric. So, I did Roy GB of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and go violet, and I just put all the things that were that color next to it. And believe it or not, it became almost the, everyone's favorite, <laughs> favorite thing because it was free associating and totally based on color. You see, I do that also. Because there, you know, there are different sides of the brain. There's the, well, there's two sides, I guess, the right and the left. <laughs> but there's, you got it. You see where I'm going with that. So this is very pleasing. So there we have it. Now, we have all this stuff. This is all on the website. At, but also, we have it in boxes. Yes. We actually owned all the, I didn't show any of the rental ones or borrowed ones in this. this so all of these, um, and we've dragged them out. We showed them at, uh, right now there's a little, well, there was, for one night only, a little mini exhibit in a clothing store in Manhattan. And now some of my sketches are still there in honor of Broadway Week. Uh, at Paul Stewart next to Brooks Brothers on Madison Avenue. So I've even been in a store. So there. Have we finished? Is yep. this it? Because I know we don't have much more time. So that's my quick. Is that the end? Yep. Okay. So that's my quick run through. You can turn on the lights again. My very quick 20 minutes. And I'm supposed to ask you for questions. So I guess. I always say, people, people call themselves artists. I call myself a theater artist. I've, I've, I've avoided the artist word because studying art history the way I do, I have and continue to do, and history, you're not an artist until 100 years after you're dead. And then they will tell you if you're an artist or not. Look at poor um, uh, Norman Rockwell. 
He's now an artist. He wasn't an artist right after he died. Remember all that snootiness? And uh, I don't know whether it's right or wrong. I'm just saying. So I'll never know if I'm an artist. But I do work in an artistic vein, in an artistic medium. Uh, collaboration is used, but it's not really correct because the theater is not equals. It's not a collaboration of equals. We all collaborate from the boss down. The boss tells us how they, he or she wants us to collaborate. So it's not a, collaboration implies equality. There is no equality. So from that, there is hope because art needs a fascist iron rod. <laughs> and uh, otherwise, it's going to be equal votes. You know all this, right? So I'm happy to say I work for people. I work for a director. I work for a producer. And I'm number two in a design um, heaven. Set design comes first, then costume design comes, then lighting design comes. And that's how it happens. And it needs to be that way. I'm perfectly happy being in a number two spot. And I love what I do. And I love telling stories. And I really describe myself. If I'm forced to describe myself, I use the rather coy, I realize, term storyteller. Oh, how sweet. But uh, <laughs> that's how I think of myself. And the, the, the tools are my hand, uh, the ink, the paper, the watercolor, the whatever the fittings, the knowledge of how something should fit. The, I also make patterns, I also drape, I make things. Dolls, <laughs> actually real people too. Um, but it's all in the service of telling stories. And so I think it's important to keep all of my things as a little mini something. What are we calling it, just a collection? collection. It's a, just a collection in the Berkshires. And you are going to also hear from another one of your speakers, Norton Owen, lives about 100 yards from this school in Chester, Massachusetts. And we're both eight miles from Jacob's Pillow. So there's where art is happening. I think we're lucky in the creative world if any of it is art, as I said. And so I always say, when people say, oh, but so I said, stay tuned. They'll tell us if it was any good. So uh, we just finished having the Tony Awards, which are our sort of orgy of self-applauding every year. And I'm sort of uh, happy to go to those. Tickled as punch to win one uh, from time to time. But we all do know that it's really, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Meanwhile, you should really enjoy the, the, the art form of storytelling, the art form of the musical, of the play. Uh, interesting enough, my favorite show this year was uh, the two were the two Shakespeare plays from the national no from the Shakespeare Festival in London, uh, which I forget the theater, but it was the uh, Mark Rylance. It was uh, Jenny Terramani designed both of them, and there they were uh, Twelfth Night and Richard the Third. Did anyone see those? Oh my goodness, I saw them twice. I would have seen them three times, but I had to see all the other shows too, because I'm a Tony voter, also. And uh, I, it changed my life. It would ch now, and I, I went away each time going, OK, now, that is art. <laughs> so it's very important that from time to time, all this self-doubt actually is justified. And you can actually see something that is magnificent and beautifully done. And uh, I, there's another exhibit that is art currently right now. If you have any moment to run to the Metropolitan Museum, the exhibit on Charles James. And I was privileged to work with Charles James in his last three years. And uh, that's art. So that's about all I should say, unless there's some questions. We have a few minutes, like what? Three, five minutes. Yes. I guess all along the way I've been aware of it, and I've also put on the white gloves and gone to Harold Coda at the Met and looked at dresses. Actually, some of I've had some lady friends who've given some of their clothes there, and we've gone and looked back at the Mamboche. She said, well, I didn't wear gloves, but I was wearing it. And, well, now we have to wear gloves because you've given it away. So now we have to be more respectful than when you drank in it. <laughs> so uh, it's very funny, all these things, right? 
so uh, I think I started going to collections and studying them. And uh, uh, Valerie Steele, of course, could be here amongst you. You know, she's at FIT, and and I think I think you pick it up just by wanting to know the correct way. But we also had some advisors, and we had some people come in, and uh, I'm still doing it. I'm sure the wrong way. So we're all we're continuously open to doing it the right way. Yes. It's never in the contract. Never. I have to ask them. In fact, it's, uh, I don't own any of it. The producers own it. What I do own, interestingly enough, are my sketches, both the intellectual property and the actual paper and pen and watercolor. Isn't that fascinating? Di except for Disney, but I don't work for Disney. Disney <laughs> owns their things. But there's, what's that, ARS, about artists, you know, the Rothko estate helped form it, you know, that whole thing. That's not, that hasn't come over to, the, to our version of the arts yet. But uh, in our contracts, we do own the actual physical drawing. So you just have to, I think it's just how, what type of Boy Scout you are, and how do you play well with others, and the producers will from time to time let you have things. Uh, I've also purchased some productions. After the first uh, Chicago close, after running for six years, I bought one of everything and wrote them a check. And uh, to the roundabout, they let me do that. I was happy to do it. And uh, other things like that. I don't really um, steal things because they're actually very happy for me to, now that I can show them this. So I use the word steal as just to make you laugh and giggle. But um, it's all, everyone knows where everything is. And uh, I've, I've lent things back to producers and to different groups you know, to show things. So. Um, it's a pretty up and above board giving. They give it to me, or they, or I buy it, or I store it, and then they forget about it. <laughs> but I have many things still stored, and they might remember it. So you know, it, it, the two-way street. I mean, I understand completely. They paid for it. I didn't. Yes. We haven't. We've had some volunteers intern. We like we. When did uh, the Ada that whole? She brought her students. Oh, that was about summer. Years was it summertime? Yes. It was in between spring summer break. We've had some people come in and do things. We've not been terribly organized about it. I mean, I guess it's more organized than not, but um, we haven't made a whole thing about it yet. That's yet one and one to grow on, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I was interested in your your sort of hierarchy of, of design that. Uh, as, as people that uh, often have to sort of contextualize and arrange material, I'm interested in that. How, how hard and fast, is that kind of hard and fast rule you would say, or, or a general good rule of thumb? Uh, I think it's a, both. I think it is a rule. I think you're, you know, you're happier if you know your place in life. You know, the French peasants <laughs> may disagree under Marie Antoinette, but. Uh, but like the Lion King or the, the Shakespeare. Well, Lion King is different. That's, just, that's when the auteur herself designed the costume. By the way, that was the only Tony Award ceremony I ever truly enjoyed. Because I was nominated that year for Cabaret. And I was very proud of Cabaret. I still am proud of Cabaret. But we were up against Lion King. So I had a wonderful evening. It was no pressure, no chance in hell. So uh, that any of that would happen. So uh, I, th I think it has to be. I think you build the house and then people walk into it wearing something and then you turn on the lights. I mean, I think it has to be that way. I think you, it's, it's wrong to do it a different way. I have been the principal design, the grown up in different groups, but I'm very respectful towards uh, the new set designer if that happens. And it does happen, the older I get, unfortunately I become the grown up. So, uh, but it's very important that they, everyone know that I'm respecting that, that process and I really take it very seriously. I also will not do a single color on my sketches until I see the set, until the set has been painted and the fabric swatches are chosen. There's no point. So uh, I'm, I'm doing the Metropolitan Opera uh, for the Metropolitan Opera, uh, Renee Fleming and Nathan Gunn in The Merry Widow right now. And uh, the, the, furn the seats and the banquette covers for the Embassy Ball just arrived. 
like the day before yesterday. So now I can finish, you see, because I wanted to know exactly what color red that was. Of course, they did let me pick the color of the national flag of Pontevedria, but uh, I was still waiting until he had already picked. The red is going to be his seats. I said, but Julian, you've already picked the color. No, no, you pick it. I thought, OK. okay. So they arrived, and it's the seat color. It needs to be the same red, right? So uh, like that. It's no skin off my nose to do it the right way. You know, you only win when we all win. Yes? Can you uh, describe your relationship, working relationship with wig makers? Oh, wig makers. Well, I always say that I'm in charge head to toe, and uh, because I get the notes. The director, the screaming director or producer doesn't yell out at the wig maker or the shoemaker or the jewelry maker. They yell my name. <laughs> so, uh, there is this aligned billing for the hair and wig design by Paul Huntley or someone else. I primarily work with the great Paul Huntley. Um, I work, well, I, I do sketches and I do references. No one cares so much about my sketches. Fascinating. My people don't care about my sketches. They want to see the references upon which I base them. They want to see the 1930s finger wave that I, from which I did my sketch. So I make sure that I have all those, even if I do them from memory and I've had a fabulous, you know, uh, Kublai Khan weekend, uh, and it all just comes out, um, I still then afterwards go back and find references that match what it is I've done, because true professional detail specialists like ventilators, wig makers, they really do need to see the real, the real thing. So uh, I provide all that, even if, I, as I said, I do a conceptualized version. You know, or it's a, it's a yeah, I always provide the. Anybody else? Because I think we're done. Well, I wish I could come to this, uh, this whole series. It looks fantastic. And I'm very tickled to uh, have been asked. Thank you. Thank you all.